Poetic Justice. It's good to be here with Uncle Joe and Auntie Pam putting up Christmas decorations and feeling the embrace of family. He's my amazed brother and we've spent many Christmases together. So at this time of year, when the whole world is tracking towards family, I'm grateful to have a place to go to. A place where the fact that I'm missing Amme will be accepted and I can be either happy or sad and not feel bad about it. It's not been a year yet since Amme has gone and at all the big events, I miss her twice as much. We've all collapsed in the living room, more than a bit overfed on Christmas delicacies. Auntie Pam is watching some utterly horrid Christmas show on TV. And I'm catching up on my messages and mails on my phone while Uncle Joe is in his usual easy chair reading. He's always reading. He's a publisher. And there's no dearth of submissions that he makes himself wade through. He's at the top of the tree now. So the stuff has been through many hands before it gets to him, which is good, as he used to put himself through so much irredeemable writing because he was just too kind. Someone has put their life into this, he'd say. That deserves some respect, some attention. Unexpectedly, I got lobbed up into the air as he threw himself down on the sofa beside me. My eyes flew open in shock. But I bit back my intended witticism and glancing furtively at auntie, giggled softly at him. Thank God for the telly, uncle, or you'd have caught it from her. He grinned back conspiratorially and handed over a bulky folder. Tell me what you think of these, he said. And I groaned. That's unfair. I'm on holiday. How bad is it? You tell me, says he and hefted himself back off to his easy chair. I flicked through it. Poetry! I wailed. But he didn't even glance in my direction. I just dumped the weighty bundle on the seat beside me and hoped I'd forget about it so I wouldn't really have to deal with it. But when it was time for bed, he reminded me and I had to cart it off to my room with as good a grace as I could muster seeing as he's a beloved uncle. It lay there on my bedside, guilting me unendingly as I brushed my teeth and climbed into my jammies. I fiddled with my face and my hair and my phone and everything else I could think of, but ultimately I had to turn to the darn thing. I kicked at the bedsheets petulantly. It was most unfair of uncle. I was on holiday for God's sake. And poetry at that, oh. But I pulled on my glasses, squared my shoulders against the pillows and faced up to the business. I awoke to a hammering on the door and jumped out of bed scrambling to open it. A passing tap on my phone told me it was past 9.30. I could hardly remember the last time I'd slept so late. I gaped at uncle, already raising his fist to hammer on the door again. Lazy bones, he grinned at me. How do you manage to earn a living? The day's half gone. Come on, get moving before your aunt worries herself to death over you. Even before he'd finished, I'd grabbed him and up on my toes, pouring my morning breath into his face, I commanded, Who's the poet? I need to know. His face melted into softness and then shuttered down. Get ready. We'll talk after breakfast. Auntie Pam knew something was afoot since I showed no interest in all her careful culinary preparations after having messaged her regularly over the last few weeks, please make this or that or the other. I gulped down my food and coffee hurriedly without tasting any of it, chivied uncle through his breakfast and dragged him off to the living room, grabbing the folder as I went. Tell me, I demanded. You first... He countered. I didn't know where to begin, but I needed an answer. I needed an answer. 
I went to that folder most reluctantly, as you well know, you wicked man. But once I'd started reading, I just couldn't stop. It gripped me from the very first page. The language is exquisite, so pristine, so simple. Just the perfect word in every place. Everything is so achingly familiar. It touches some chord deep within me. But it's also discordant. As if I've known this poet my whole life, intimately, but also don't know her. I could almost hear Amme reciting it. But only almost. There were words and phrases she used. But these are not her thoughts. This is not Amme's soul. This is some other soul using her voice. How can that be? I asked myself. I read it greedily, went back and read it again and again. It unsettled me. And can it really be as beautiful as I think it is? Strong, melodic, intimate, deeply personal. No story, but there's a uniting thread. You can feel the skills develop. You can sense the character progression. Something caught my chest and squeezed it until I could almost not breathe, uncle. I laughed with her. I wept with her. I gasped and was anguished for her. There's such a strange sense of both belief and disbelief. Who is this uncle? Hame didn't write poetry. Surely I would have known if she had. Her only child. Could she have hidden it from me? Never. Then who is this? Who brings her back to life again? Who uses her words and speech patterns but thinks completely different thoughts? Look, I held out my arms to him, all covered in goose pimples. Even the memory of those lines. A warmth and a chill passed through me together as I felt my mother's living presence around me. The mother I'd always known and loved and admired, but also some other I'd never known. Some undefined other. How could it be that I'd never known this part of her? I'd read and reread those pages greedily and hungrily, like a camel at an oasis. My mother didn't speak like this. Or at least she'd never spoken like this in my presence. Never expressed such thoughts. I'd never even seen her read poetry. And she didn't write other than the usual lists and stuff. But how could anybody else be so like her? These were poems by a young girl, a wife, a mother, a mature woman, a widow, a lifetime's worth of emotions captured in rhythmic cadence. There was laughter, tears, fire, ice, rage. My mother didn't rage. She was a calm person. Passion? My mother was not passionate. She was even-tempered. Despair. My mother never despaired. She accepted everything with equanimity. Wit and humor. Those were the only bits that I completely accepted as her. Then, could I deny the rest? My uncle held my gaze softly. He reached out and wiped away my tears. That's when I knew I was crying. The spate of water from my eyes drenched my face, his handkerchief, my lap, and still had no end. He stroked me lovingly. Auntie Pam brought me some water. They both seemed to be in on the secret. Had I not known her at all? Yet I had instinctively recognized her voice when I read it. The tears eventually abated. My hand crept to the folder, fortunately undrenched by my tempest. My fingers stroked it lovingly. So, so exquisite. Like shining gemstones. How could she have hooded such a dazzling light? Why would she feel the need to hide? 
And why did she share it with her brother and not with me, her only child? These poems deserved to be heard. That was only just and fair. They needed to be heard, to ring around the world from heart to echoing heart. Uncle lifted my chin and looked into my red eyes with more than his usual sweetness. Do I have your permission to publish? Thank you.